listen. This is the problem. You think you got to write a book that's that thick. I'm here to tell you, you don't have to write a book like that at all. I could show you all kinds of examples of people who are in this seminar who have used books. Uh, 70, or sorry, 80 to 100 pages is all you need to do. These are people whose income skyrocketed, whose businesses exploded almost overnight by writing an 80 to 100 page book. See, if you take uh, 10 chapters, you write 8 to 10 pages each, you publish that like this, and I'm going to show you how in a minute, all of a sudden, you're an author. You've got to let go of this idea that you have to write a big, giant book. You've got to let go of that idea. You don't. This book, by the way, is entitled, what every, Everything Men Know About Women, But Every Page is Blank. So let me tell you what I think is the problem. I think the reason why most of you have been thinking about this for 5, 10, 15, 20 years is because you think you have to write a book that's world-changing, earth-shattering, industry-revolutionizing, a personality-altering book that's history-making, an incomprehensibly complicated work of art that's totally original, with never-before-heard-of content, a massively-sized book, masterfully written, in perfect English, a one-of-a-kind book, without one single spelling mistake. So I think that that's the problem. You think you've got this, you've got this notion inside that it's, that it's so big. This, this idea that it has to be such a phenomenal book that's going to kick Robert Kiyosaki and Tony Robbins off the bestseller list. That's not what I'm recommending at all. But you've got to be willing to do it. Are you willing? Let's... Uh, let me give you the eight steps very quickly. These are eight steps that non-writer types can do. And again, this is entrepreneurial publishing, so I'm not talking about children's books. I'm not talking about novels or cookbooks. I want to talk to you about how to become an entrepreneur and do the right kind of book that's going to catapult your income and explode your business. Let's get at it. Look at this book, for example. This is a book we did for a plastic surgeon. Look at all the coverage he's gotten. He's a plastic surgeon in Beverly Hills. I published his book called Beverly Hills Shaped. Look at all the media attention. He, this didn't happen by accident. It happened because he understood the first step of entrepreneurial publishing. And that is, determine your primary objective. You want to ask yourself, if your book could only do one thing for you, what would it do? Just look at, it just goes on and on and on the media coverage. Because he thought about it in advance, he was going to do a book that was going to get him media attention. Now in his case, he's a plastic surgeon. There are before and after pictures from breast augmentation, and, and that helps with publicity. <laughs> just make sure your book has something to do with breasts, yes. But listen, a book can do a number of things for you. What you want to do is you want to ask yourself, if your book could only do one thing for you, what would that one thing be? Just think about this. Which one of those things, if your book could only do one thing, what would you, what would you want it to do? See, let that be the determining factor. And so I get people to think about their primary objective. Let me illustrate it this way. I was in Los Angeles. And at the end of the seminar, a guy came to me and said that he, he wanted to show me his manuscript because I own a book publishing company. And I said to him, I don't care about manuscripts, uh, especially not right now. I said, uh, what is your book going to be about? He said, it's a book of poems. He, he must have noticed that I'm not a big poem kind of guy. And he comes up to me and says, hey, these are different. And he puts his finger right in my nose. I said, dude, relax. What, what's the matter? He said, these poems are different. I said, tell me. He said, these poems are designed to teach men how to connect more intimately with their boys, with their male children. And he, and he read some to me, and I thought, my goodness. They were, I mean, it was a very phenomenal. I got three boys. My wife and I just celebrated our 31st uh, wedding anniversary, and we got three wonderful boys. Yeah, if you're going to applaud, now would be the time. I love her. It was, she was my teenage sweetheart. We met on a blind date. I was uh, 18. She was 19. 
I liked older women. <laughs> Actually, when you're 18, you like any woman. <laughs> so, so, so I have three boys, and so he's telling me that these poems could help me connect more intimately with my sons. Is that a good book? Come on, tell me. Is it? Yeah. So I said to him, what's your primary objective? He said, my primary objective is, objective is to get on uh, publicity. Because if I get publicity, I know that I'll invite men to come to my seminars. And he says, Jerry, if, they come, if men come to my seminars, I'm going to change their life. And I'll change the life of their boys. Wow. Is that a good objective? Yes. But that objective will never in a hundred years be met with this book. You're never going to hear a radio guy say, when we come back from the break, we've got a, a guy who's going to talk to us about poems. You're never going to get publicity with that. That's because the person hasn't thought through what's the objective before he starts writing. See, most people only think about writing instead of thinking in advance that a book is more engineered than it is written if you're an entrepreneur. You think through in advance what you want the book to do for you. I said to him, if you want your book, to get you publicity, don't do a book of poems. Write a book entitled, How to Make Sure Your Boys Don't End Up Like Michael Jackson. <laughs> would that get publicity? Yes. Of course it would. So you got to ask yourself, what do you want the book to do for you? Start first. It can do so many things. But before you start writing, ask yourself, what do you want it to do for you? The next step is to write the right content. Now again, most of you think that you know, maybe there's a lot of books on your subject, and so you think perhaps you shouldn't write to it because what could you possibly contribute? It doesn't matter. If there are 10,000 books written uh, on your subject, we call that a clue. <laughs> so don't let the fact that there's other books stop you, but also don't freak out that the content has to be, you know, everything known to mankind about that topic. You can write 10 chapters, 8 to 10 pages each. Give people, as Andy said earlier so eloquently, give them good content that's going to serve them and solve their problems. That's, what, that's all you need to do. In fact, this book here, was a guy came to this seminar. He's an accountant. Any accountants here today? Yeah, they don't go out much. Um, I'm just kidding. But the good ones come here. The good ones come here. So this guy was an accountant. He said, what could I write a book on? I said, find out what does he want to do in life. He wanted to become a speaker. And he wanted to become a humorous speaker because he deals with numbers all day. You know what his book is? It's all of the jokes that circulate around the internet. You know all those jokes? He just compiled them all and put it in a book. He uses the book as a marketing tool to, to become a humorous speaker. And he gives after-dinner speeches for for $1,500 for a 50-minute after dinner speech, and all he does is comes behind the podium and just reads the jokes. <laughs> and you think you've got to have the best, uh, most comprehensive book on the topic? Let go of that. As long as you've been, uh, as you understand where you're going, what you're going to deliver, and you write a book based on the needs, desires, and problems of your target market, base it on your, ex on your experience, that's all you need to do. Uh, can I share the best joke uh, from this book? Can I do that? So this guy, this is a story about Johnny. It's in this book. Johnny is outside and he finds a package of Viagra pills. So he quickly goes to his dad and says, Dad, I got these pills. I'll sell them to you for 100 bucks." Father says, no, I'm in good health. Don't need those, thanks. But go and ask Grandpa. So he goes across the street and he asks Gramps. He says, Gramps, I got this box of Viagra. I'll sell them to you for 100 bucks." And... Grandpa said, do you think that they'll work, Johnny? Johnny says, I don't know. They look like the ones that are advertised on TV. He says, tell you what, I'm going to try them tomorrow morning. I'll try them tonight. And if they work tomorrow morning, I'll give you 100 bucks. That's fine. Johnny uh, comes back the next morning. And Grandpa gives him 500 bucks. He said, Gramps, I, I thought we agreed on 100. He said, that's fine. The rest is from grandma. Keep it. <laughs> well, they're not all that good. So let go of the idea. Now some of you feel, and many of you have struggled with this. You know why? Because I struggled with it, and I'm sure we're the same. 
who the hell am I to write a book? And so if you're here and you're struggling with that, do what I recommended to David Chua. David Chu was from Perth, and he came to the seminar, and he was 20 years old when he attended this uh, National Achievers Congress. He attended my, my boot camp. He uh, is in network marketing. I said, what book are you going to write? He said, I'm going to write a book on network marketing. I said, never. Don't, if you're in network marketing, don't write a book on network marketing. Nobody cares about network marketing. Write a book based on the needs, desires, and problems of your target market. Nobody goes to bed at night thinking, how can I join a network marketing company? What they really think about is how do I make money? How do I get out of debt? How do I get out of the rat race? I said, write, I said, write a book called Millionairehood. He said, what? How can I write a book on, on becoming a millionaire? He says, I'm 20 years old and I don't have any money. I looked at him and said, you don't have to be an expert to write a book on a topic. He looked at me again like I had three heads. I said, what do you mean? He says, I said, you don't have to be wealthy to write a book on how to get wealthy. You just got to go interview other people who are wealthy. Think about it. That's exactly what Napoleon Hill did for Think and Grow Rich, didn't he? He wrote a book when he was a reporter. He was making next to nothing. It was in the 30s. Uh, he went and interviewed wealthy people and got content. He put it in his own words, and then he became the author. And that's exactly what David Chua did. He simply went and interviewed wealthy people. That's what... That's, that's what I would do if you told me I had to go in and, and go into any city and uh, start new in some different career. The first thing I'd do is I'd write.